Greetings, I am Dr. S. Munish Balaji. Today, we will be talking about the sternal angle of Louis. The angle of Louis is the anterior angle formed by the junction of the manubrium sterni and the body of the sternum. The sternal angle ranges from 149 to 177 degrees with an average of 163.4 degrees in males and 165 degrees in females. So what is the clinical importance of the angle of Louis? It marks the point at which the coastal cartilage of the second rib articulates with the sternum. This is particularly useful when counting the ribs to identify landmarks in the thoracic area. The angle of Louis lies at the level of the T4 T5 intervertebral disc. This is the level of the transverse thoracic plane which divides the mediastinum into superior and inferior mediastinum. It overlies the aortic arch on the left and the superior vena cava on the right. The ascending iota ends at this level. The descending iota begins at this level. The arch of iota both begins and ends at this level. The pericardium extends from just superior to the level of the angle of Louis to the level of the ziphy sternal joint. The azagous vein arches over the root of the right lung and drains into the SVC at this level. The thoracic duct crosses from right to left side at the level of the angle of Louis. Similarly, the bifurcation of the trachea and the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk also occur at this level. It is at this level that the cardiac plexus is situated. It is at the level of the angle of Louis that the ligamentum arteriosum attaches to the aortic arch. This image shows the different structures which lie at the level of the angle of Louis. So how does one palpate this important clinical landmark? One has to find the sternal notch and move one's fingers down the manubrium a few centimeters until one feels a distinct bony ridge which is the sternal angle. One of the important components of the cardiology examination in clinical medicine is the measurement of the JVP. The JVP is measured as the vertical distance from the top of the column of blood in the internal jugular vein to a zero point which is most commonly taken to be the level of the right atrium. The JVP indirectly gives the pressure in the right atrium. Estimate the JVP at the bedside is by measuring the height of the jugular venous pressure relative to the sternal angle. This requires that the distance from the sternal angle of Louis to the level of the mid right atrium be known. This value is often taken to be 5 cm. This clinical photograph shows the measurement of the jugular venous pressure. Thank you.